Okay, welcome to the lecture on assumption testing and effect sizes. Uh, this is uh, the lecture that's going to basically just go over this worksheet. Uh, should be pretty quick. Um, first of all, what you're going to be doing for this topic is you're going to read uh, this particular section. It's a pretty small section. I'm just going to go ahead and click on it and pull it up. Um, and then uh, you're going to read through this overview sheet. Uh, and then you're also going to watch um, a video on effect sizes and a short video on assumption testing. So this right here is the, um, the section in the textbook on effect sizes. Um, and so just be aware of that. We are going over more than just this. Uh, this is just what happens to be in the textbook, uh, which is really, in my complete honest opinion, very frustrating to me um, because effect sizes are so important. Um, and it really uh, demonstrates the uh, how much we as uh, a group of uh, you know, statisticians, if you will, um, focus more on just getting results than being able to say, okay, how noticeable are the results? Um, and so this is what's in there on effect sizes. There really should be a lot more information on effect sizes because they are so important. Um, and then also assumption testing, which uh, there's really not much in the book on assumption testing, <laughs> which once again is another really frustrating thing because it's like you can't run a test unless the assumptions are true. Um, and so for the life of me, I do not understand why uh, they do not put more emphasis on assumption testing and effect sizes in teaching uh, entry level statistics. Um, next, you're also going to complete the homework problems on this sheet and uh, submit a picture or file of uh, the completed homework on Canvas and then uh, complete the assumption and effect sizes quiz. So you can go through these wonderful, uh, I'm going to change this all to, um, let's see, uh, Times New Roman, there we go. Uh, there's assumptions, effect sizes, Cohen's D, Kramer's V. These are both effect sizes. Um, and uh, so now we're going to, um, yeah, just kind of go through this. So first of all, what are assumptions? Um, assumptions are requirements of data that must be true uh, to be able to appropriately and accurately use a specific hypothesis test. Uh, each hypothesis test has its own list of assumptions uh, that must be true. I'm going to have a whole video just on assumptions, uh, so I'm just going to indicate that the definition is there. Also, effect sizes is a measure of how practically significant the difference is between the two independent variables, or two independent samples, or um, just uh, how different the results are, um, how noticeable the results are. This this right here, this effect size definition comes straight from the book, which uh, comes from the section on independent samples. And so um, uh, the effect size uh, definition is a measure of how practically significant um, the, uh, the results or findings are. Um, so... Uh, which I hate ending in a preposition, but it is what it is. So effect size and then Cohen's D, uh, this is a measure of effect size and this is also a measure of effect size. So just be aware of that. Um, next, what is the purpose? Um, why should I check assumptions? Each test has its own set of assumptions and requirements about the data. One of the most frustrating things is the fact that we very rarely actually test assumptions. We pull all of this data and we say, okay, we've got all these findings um, and uh, we've got all these findings, but um, we didn't test any assumptions in order to be able to make sure that the findings are actually reliable. Um, and so uh, assumptions are basically saying, hey, you need to play by the rules if you want to make sure that your results are accurate, if you want to be able to make sure that your interpretation of the results are viable. Uh, and if you don't play by the rules, then the interpretation is basically shot. 
Uh, so just be aware of that, that the majority of, uh, <laughs> in my opinion, the majority of individuals who run these tests very rarely test the assumptions. Um, if the assumptions aren't true, the interpretations and the results will not be accurate. Uh, next, also, the purpose of uh, effect sizes. Even if you have a statistically significant result because of the p-value, uh, because the p-value is below the alpha, uh, you may find, yes, it, you've got a statistically significant result. You've got something there. But uh, what you've got is so minute that it's barely even worth reporting. Um, and so that's really important to note that just because you have something, you're like, oh my goodness, I caught something, I got something. But it's absolutely nothing at all. It's just the fact that your sample size is so massively large that you happen to find something. Uh, so just be aware uh, when you go fishing for data, uh, really isn't that great when you uh, have a very uh, low uh, effect size. Um, next. In the rest of the sheet, you, we've got the homework problems right down here. Um, and then we also have, at the very bottom, we have this wonderful chart that has uh, the assumptions. All of the assumptions for all the different tests. Um, and so... Uh, let's take a look at this really quick. So this, this is really... Uh, these questions are all about um effect size um and uh yeah let's just go over this and uh go from there assuming all the following comparisons yield a significant result do you believe that the effect size will be small medium or large uh this is not stuff that you're going to be able to find in your textbook like i said the textbook really doesn't really focus on uh effect sizes so this is up to me to be able to be like hey let's uh make sure that you know do the right thing, uh, run the right tests, um, interpret it appropriately. So, um, a small, medium, or large effect. Uh, a small effect size is something that is barely even noticeable. You need something, you need very large sample sizes in order to be able to uh, find it, uh, to see it. Um, medium effect size is, you know, like I said, medium. Uh, and then large effect size is very noticeable. Um, for example, the height of a men's basketball player's uh, compared to women's gymnast height. Um, is this uh, small, is this medium, or is this large? And I would say that this is a large effect size, and the reason why is because um, the height of uh, a men's basketball player's um, is, is going to be very tall. And if I were to put um, these individuals all into a room, um, you right away wouldn't even need any more information. You could just look at their heights and you could be able to say, okay, this person is a men's basketball player. This person is a women's gymnast. Um, and so it'd be very clear to see that um, you know, these two groups are extremely different and you only need a very small sample size in order to be able to tell it. Okay, so moving on, uh, let's take a look at this. Average number of players on a football team compared to the average number of players on a basketball team. So if I were to take, you know, 50 football uh, teams uh, and let's just say high school football teams, uh, because high school football teams aren't always the same size. And you're like, no, they are. Well, that's because you're from Texas. When you're in Wisconsin or a place up north where, you know, you're scrounging around to get every single last player, uh, you have a lot of players that play both ends of the field. Uh, and your, your team still might only be, you know, 25 to 30 deep. Uh, where down here in Texas, I don't even know how large they are. It's like 52 players or something like that. Um, but uh, on a basketball team, you know, you only have 12 players. And so uh, you take, you know, 50 teams of basketball players, and they all have anywhere between, you know, 6 to 12 players. And then you have 50 teams that have football players, and they're all uh, 30 to 50 some odd uh, players. And so when you put uh, those numbers next to each other, the question is, is, is it really noticeable that there's a difference? And the answer is yes. It's very noticeable that there is a big difference between the two. Uh, you can put, you can compare just a small sample, and even with a small sample, you can see that there's a big difference. And so that would be a large effect size. Uh, next, um, average starting salaries of graduates with master's degrees compared to graduates with bachelor's degrees. Okay, and so having a master's degree often starts you out with a slightly higher salary. Um, 
the difference is noticeable, but it's not huge. Um, and so uh, what this would be, this would probably be somewhere between a, it would probably be about a medium effect size. So on average, you know, individuals with master's degrees might earn about two to $3,000 more a year as compared to an individual with a bachelor's degree. Um, and so you might have to run a, you know, a test to be able to see it. Um, but, uh, and you might need to have a slightly larger sample size. Um, but I would say it's somewhere between a small to a medium uh, effect size because, you know, you, you would be able to tell the difference, but uh, you wouldn't necessarily just be able to put a sal like several salaries out and say, who's got a master's degree, who's got a bachelor's degree. Um, and so for that reason, um, you know, it'd probably be in, probably somewhere closer to small. Um, so next... Uh, Comparing the proportion of residents of Texas to Maine who prefer beef, chicken, or seafood. Um, so this would probably be a uh, large effect size. Why would this be a large effect size? Well, I would assume um, because we're in Texas, uh, we d we have really bad seafood here. I don't know if y'all know that, but our seafood here is horrible. Uh, and the reason why is because the closest place that we have seafood is the Gulf of Mexico. And if you compare the, the, the ocean uh, up in Maine compared to the Gulf of Mexico, uh, by golly, the, what comes out of uh, you know, the ocean up in Maine is so much better. Uh, so you have uh, um, individuals who have really high quality seafood up in Maine as compared to individuals who have you know high quality beef down here in Texas so because of that um, my guess is is that people in Texas are going to prefer their beef uh, and their barbecue a lot more well people up in Maine are going to prefer their seafood a lot more and so you're going to see a, a lot higher proportion up in Maine uh, as compared to down in Texas of uh, seafood lovers and then a really high proportion of individuals in Texas who love beef as compared to uh, Maine. So that's going to be a large effect size. Next, uh, give your own example. Um, this is something that you just need to put down, um, something that is a small effect size. So like right here, uh, compare two different things. Uh, you know, like for instance, uh, I don't know, weights of things, um, life of batteries, uh, you know, life of a Duracell battery as compared to the life of an off-brand battery. Um, let's see here, the cost of a performance computer to the cost of a Chromebook, uh, that would be a large, effects, uh, large effect size. Um, but there's just so many things that basically, is there a big difference, a medium difference, or a small difference? Uh, is the difference very noticeable, somewhat noticeable, or barely noticeable at all? That's basically what you're looking at here, and that's a small, medium, and large effect size. Um, so how is the assumption about the observed values different between paired samples? So now we're getting into assumption testing. And so I want you to take a look at these. Um, and uh, uh, this is uh, something that I don't think that I necessarily want to give you too much guidance on, but I'm going to tell you where to find these answers. How is the assumptions about the observed values different between paired samples, independent samples, and single samples? So let's come down here and uh, we've got a single sample, independent sample, paired sample, goodness of fit, a goodness of fit for unequal proportions. And then it says, okay, what's being examined? It's got uh, basically the information about what each of these tests do. And then down here, we've got assumptions. Now with assumptions, uh, what I did is uh, each one of these actually have their own set of assumptions. But I broke these up by each one of these has, a dis, uh, has an assumption about uh, a dependent variable. Each one of these has an assumption about an independent variable, about the observed values, about the distribution. Some of them have assumptions about outliers. Excuse me. And then one of them has assumptions about uh, the variance. Okay. So uh, what I asked in this very first question is, Oh, how is the assumption about the observed values different between paired samples, independent samples, and single samples? So you come down here and you say, okay, let's look at observed values. Let's look at these three. How are these three different? Well, these two are identical. So what, it, uh, what we're looking at here is this one is going to be different. And so I want you to look at that and tell me how is it different? 
Okay, um, then which hypothesis test requires a normal distribution as an assumption? Come down here. Okay, and look at distribution, and some of them require a normal distribution, some of them do not require a normal distribution. And depending on, uh, in the textbook, it's going to say something slightly different about the normal distribution for some of these tests, but for this particular class, um, we are running certain tests with a normal distribution, and then... Um, certain tests uh, with proportions. There are ways to run certain tests with different distributions, uh, which the book goes into, which is really cool uh, to know how to do that. But for, for this class, stick with what I have right here. Okay. Um, and then uh, which hypothesis test compares means? Once again, come down here uh, and it says, um, you know, what's being examined. Some of them have means, some of them have proportions. Um, and then, uh, once again, stick with what I have in this chart. Don't go by the book for that one. Um, and then, uh, which hypothesis test compares proportions or frequencies? Once again, take a look at this and you'll be able to tell. So that's pretty much, uh, the homework for the assumption testing. That shouldn't take you too long, uh, just a few minutes and then you can move on.